for joining with us for Words of Hope. Over the next five Sunday nights in May at 7.30 p.m., we, the Elan Church in Ireland here, will be broadcasting a series of short yet very important messages, words of hope that will speak life into the current crisis. Each night we are going to have different speakers and they are going to address the questions that we have during this lockdown period. After the video, we are going to have a question and answer session with our speakers to delve deeper into their work. So make sure to keep tuned on our Elam Ireland Facebook page for that. So we would love you to help us to get these messages as far out as we can. So please like, share and even host watch parties on Facebook so that we can reach as many people as possible. Our speaker tonight is Malcolm Duncan. He is Senior Pastor of the Donald Edom Church and his topic is Does COVID-19 Get the Final Word? I hope you enjoy. Does COVID-19 get the last word? Is this the thing that's going to wipe us all out? Is this an indication that the end of the world is coming? That's a question that lots of people are asking. Some Christians, some people from other faiths, and maybe you're asking it too. Well, in order to answer that question, there are a couple of other questions and things that we need to explore. First of all, from a Christian perspective, the only person that gets the last word is God. We are told in the Bible repeatedly that God sees and knows all things and that in the end he will put all things right. At the end of the whole story of Scripture in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, we're given a picture of a God who makes all things new, who removes sorrow and pain and um, anxiety and death itself and wipes our tears from our eyes. The great and all-powerful God reaches out his hand in tenderness and touches the eye, the most delicate organ of the human body, and removes our sorrow and our pain. That's where the last word on the COVID-19 crisis will come, when God puts all things right and wipes all tears away. But underneath that question, there are other questions. There are those that are atheists that say, for example, COVID-19 is just a happenstance. Like Richard Dawkins, it's a consequence of a whole series of um, inconceivable and unconnected coincidences and we just have to live with it. That might be an answer which is um, intellectually helpful for some, but for me it raises more questions than providing answers. What about the hopelessness of it then? What about the despair of it? What about good that might come out of it? It doesn't explain human kindness and compassion and mercy and all of the things that we really think about and that make us human. Our relationships, our friendships, our love, our hopes for the future, our comfort, our need to make sense of the world. Then what about people of faith? Well, there are those in other faiths that might argue that COVID-19 is some kind of um, universal vengeance on a world gone wrong, that it is karma. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that it it, it breeds a, a deep sense of insecurity, a deep, deep uh, sense of passivity on behalf of those who watch. If this is karma, if we deserve this, then why should we get ourselves involved in trying to make it better? If we're trying to make it better, are we not just going to perpetuate the sense of dread and gloom? And then there are those within the Christian faith. Some will argue that COVID-19 is God's judgment, that it's evidence of the last days, that we are in the last time and God is pouring out his judgment on an angry world. They'll point to a story in the Old Testament, for example, when God sends plagues upon the people of Egypt in order to set the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, free. I have a problem with that because in the story of the plagues, God explicitly explains what he is going to do. He takes responsibility for it and he names himself. It's clear, I am doing this. But in this situation, there is no indication at all that God has said, I am doing this. There's no verse that we can point to. There's no uh, word from God that says, I have given the world COVID-19 to punish it. Instead, let's reflect for a moment on two stories in the New Testament. The first is in Luke chapter 13, where Jesus tells the story of an incident at the temple where he's speaking at the time. It's the first four verses where there was a, um, an accident and the building at the temple and um, had, 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 had some kind of crisis happen and people died. And Jesus said, do you think that that somehow proves that they were morally worse than you? And he says, no, it doesn't. And he was on to tell the story of a, of a tower that collapsed near a pool in Jerusalem called the Pool of Siloam, where 18 people died. And Jesus says, don't assume that that happened because of something that they did. Instead, ask your question, are you ready for such a calamity? Have you made your peace with God? You see, sometimes we will ask the wrong question. 
So to say that God sent COVID-19 is a valid question, but I'm not sure it's the right one. Because whether uh, you believe that he did or not, and I don't believe that he did, I do believe that he can use this crisis to speak into our hearts and into our lives. And that this crisis precipitates a deeper question in us, and that is, are we right with God? Have we settled our fate with him? Are we at peace with him? Are we ready to die? The second story in the Gospels is the story of the death and the resuscitation or resurrection of a man called Lazarus, Jesus' friend. He lives in Bethany and Jesus delays going to Bethany to Lazarus and his two sisters Mary and Martha when he hears that he is ill. As a result, Lazarus dies. And when he gets there, Martha and Mary, Lazarus' sisters, are angry at Jesus. And Martha first of all says to him, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus says, um, your brother will live again. Note, first of all, that there is a comment and a commitment about relationships after death carrying on. Not just Lazarus, your brother. Atheists don't have that hope. Other people don't have that hope. Christians do. Then Jesus says, um, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. And he who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Do you believe this? He, and Mary says, yeah, uh, Martha, I beg your pardon, says, yes, I believe that we will all be resurrected in the last day. But Jesus makes it very clear. She, he gives her an intellectual answer because she's asking an intellectual question. A few minutes later, when her sister Mary comes out, she says almost the same thing to Jesus. If you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus doesn't answer her question in the same way. He enters the emotion of it and he weeps with her. You see, God will come to you where you are. If you have an intellectual question, he might respond to you by saying, you're asking the wrong question. Are you ready to face life after death? Are you ready to face the consequences of how you have lived? If you are emotionally broken by COVID-19 because you've lost someone, God and Christians shouldn't enter into, God won't and Christians shouldn't enter into answering your question in a thousand ways. Instead, we enter your sorrow, your heartbreak and your pain. So in the end, do I think that God caused COVID-19? No. Did he permit it? Yes. Why? Well, I don't know. But I know that we can ask ourselves a question as a result of this pandemic. Are we ready to die? Are we ready to meet our maker? Have we considered our own vulnerability, our own mortality? And have we considered the God question? You see, sometimes natural disasters, sometimes pandemics, sometimes things that we can't explain provoke deeper questions. And I think... The pandemic is provoking a deeper question, a set of deeper questions. Do you realise your own mortality? Probably. Do you sense your vulnerability? Almost certainly. Are you ready to meet God, your maker? I don't know. But I know that God is ready to meet you and offers us life and grace through Jesus Christ. There's another story that I want to reflect on and just leave with you very briefly. In the Old Testament, a man called Joseph is abandoned by his family and 30 years after everything goes wrong in his life, he is reunited. And in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, he says this, when he is reunited with his brothers, what you intended for harm, God has used for good. Can the COVID-19 crisis be used for good? Yes. Human kindness can be shown. Compassion can be shown. Solidarity can be shown. But above all, you and I can think about our vulnerability, our mortality, and whether or not we are ready to meet with God. And God offers us hope, grace, and mercy through his son, Jesus Christ, who doesn't explain suffering. He enters it and explores it and endures it with us. Does COVID-19 get the last word? No, God always gets the last word. But in your last moments, are you and I ready to meet with him? That's a question we have to consider. Thank you, Pastor Malcolm, for that message. Straight after this, we'll be hosting a Q&A session with Pastor Malcolm, so please join with us on our Facebook page for that. If you would like to know more about how to become a Christian, please visit elamchurchireland.com or if you'd like to know more about a church near you, please email info at elamchurchireland.com. We would love to have you back with us for our next broadcast on Sunday the 10th of May at 7.30pm with the Irish Superintendent Pastor Edwin Michael. So thanks again for joining with us and we hope that you can stay for our Q&A session that's about to follow with Pastor Malcolm.